Hi there. I'm going to be playing Vampire Bloodlines, The Masquerade, or something like that. I'm positive I fucked up that title even though I love this game. I originally played, I think it was the Redemption, way, way back in the day before this game even came out. That's what got me into White Wolf to start with. I've never played the pen and paper game, though I understand how it works. But that's got nothing to do with this game. This game is a sequel to Redemption. It's uh, arguably decently fast-paced action RPG. And I'm going to be answering these questions. And I'm going to be a guy, because I am a guy. Some drunk immortals attempt to pick a fight in a bar. Do you trash the place with their broken bodies? Uh, no need to go on a rampage. Clear them out doesn't necessarily mean kill them. I don't need to kill people to demonstrate my superiority. You just started playing a cool computer game. That's full of bugs. Ah, it's a Bethesda game. Do you get onto several forums to complain about the issue? Email the developers to get the game fixed. Decide to look into the code myself. Technically, I do know how to look into code, but I'm pretty stupid when it comes to actually fixing it. Honestly, I'm pretty basic. I'd go into the forums. Late. I'm at the red spot, waiting for my microwave burrito. There are three arcade games to waste time on. Which do I play? Probably the sniper game. You're in a hospital looking for a doctor who's laid on his blood payments. A nurse steps in front of you and says, You can't go to there, it's just drink it. Medical staff only. Dude, toss her aside like a ragdoll and keep going. Show her your fangs for her life. See, if I just pick her up and I throw her across three rooms, it's going to be pretty obvious. Something is wrong. Something is amiss. Something isn't playing right. However, if I just bury my fangs and she runs off screaming, I could always just lie about it later. Oh, oh, it was a costume prop. No big deal, right? That's, that's what we're doing. I'm at a nightclub. I'm having a damn good time. Not really. When you realize you're out of money, no cash, no fun, do you seduce someone and have them pay for my drinks? Time it just right so I can snatch a bottle when the bartender isn't looking. Go home and read a book or listen to music in something that is actually intellectual stimulating. Yeah, we'll be doing three. You want to turn this first date into a second one. How do you do it? Uh, look at me. Who doesn't want another dose of this? Intelligent conversation, the right wine, ordering in the language of ethnic food. The words cruel and unforgiving place, but you've gotten by so far. Why? It may be cruel to you, but it's hilarious to me. Because the world bends to my will. The world almost certainly does not bend to my will. Take a look around. Not my cup of tea. So, it's hilarious. And I have been embraced by the Malkavian. Bad shit, crazy vampires. Inflicted with insanity. You can read it all if you like. I'm, I'm not going to parrot everything. Show me my character sheet, good sir. These are my attributes and abilities. There are the red dots there. Yeah, see? Insane Malkavian clan. Bashing crazy vampires. My actions throughout the game. Yeah. Anytime uh, 
the attributes and abilities over here, they'll add up into B feats. So this would be strength and brawling, strength and weapons, perception and ranged weapons. I think that's dexterity and defense. But each and every single one of these has two, with the exception of soak. The public, the covert, and the combat feats are all made up of both attributes and abilities. And you can really min-max this game to the hell, to the high heavens and back again. But I'm not doing that. I'm not exactly a newbie at this game, though I am incurably insane. This game, it really wants to make a fine point of that. You're insane. You're insane. Am I? I don't know. We'll find out. This is your humanity. Seven is the norm, ten is saintly. And the lower you go, the closer to the beast you become. Now, I have never been able to get below this point right here. I just, I could not do it. Doesn't matter how many people you kill, you just can't go any further than that. I'm told, I've read, that if you do evil actions and quests, that could bring it down, but it never actually goes to zero because that's perma frenzy, and that would basically just be a game over. But without the game over, it's just perma frenzy. These will actually provoke a game over. The higher up this is, the less known you are as a vampire. People might suspect, but you haven't done anything to reel them really make them say, oh, he's not human. Yeah, this can actually be a little fun to play with because you can do things to earn masquerade points back and you got to get it down to, I think this one right here, the third one. And then human vampire hunters will show up and that's the only way I know, or at least the only way I remember, to get a flaming torch as a weapon, which is amazingly good. Especially if you manage to get one early in the game by killing a vampire hunter. The Belmont clan just isn't pulling their weight today. Yeah. And that's what I'll be using. Auto level. See, I've been through this game a couple times already. Uh, one of the easiest playthroughs I have ever had was a Ventru, who... I beefed up basically like a melee soldier. His soak was through the roof. He was basically unkillable. It was kind of like watching the Terminator just hack his way through anything in his path with a katana. Which was freaking hilarious because Venture, so they're supposed to be social, mental, then physical, but I, I kind of threw that out the window <laughs> and made him physical, social, mental. And he was fucking mental. He was stupid good at this game. Best armor, maximum soak, high, uh, what is it? Presence? It's like a massive area debuff. Everything had a negative four. They couldn't touch me. The last boss bowed to me. I made him my bitch. Let's see what we got. Barely better than human. Well, better than most humans. Small frame, built like Arnold in his prime. Not bad with manipulation. I don't know how I do that when I can barely put a sentence together because I'm incurably insane. <laughs> Regardless of their dementia or perhaps because of it, Malkavians are fascinating conversationalists. Fair point. Malkavians are bastions of mental fortitude. Perhaps simply because no one else wants in their head. Very likely. The natural talents of the Malkavian are inhibited only by the many voices in their head, which you will be hearing throughout this playthrough. And they can be pretty funny and helpful, honestly, at times. With a wide open mind and a lack of inhibitions, Malkavians are constantly learning. 
The twisted mind of the Malkavian grants great insight. If only others would communicate with them. Which they should. I'm apparently a really good conversationalist. And this is probably one of my favorite uh, disciplines in the entire game. It's, it's a bit like Jedi mind trick. You can use it in dialogue and make some funny stuff happen. Not to mention you can just make random people laugh hysterically or cry compulsively. This is really useful for trying to sneak past people. Making this almost entirely pointless in my mind, but well, it's a nice backup plan. Especially when you combine them. You know what? Just give me these two. I want to see through walls and see where everyone is and then drive them insane. This is pointless for me. I'd rather have anything else in the game, I think. I mean, Gangrel, they have their own discipline that I can't have, but whatever. Give me... Give me, give me presents. <laughs> I would think a Malkavian would have presents. Ooh, history. Cut rate party clown. It was supposed to be just until you put things together after Evelyn left you. Here it is, three years, 3,246 scotches later. Somehow you've kept this gig going without one repeat customer. Truly, America is the greatest nation on earth. <laughs> oh, I forgot about the histories. Uh, oh my god, occult nut. Who would thought any of it would be real? You love dark fantasies and consider yourself a cult savvy. Now that you're among the kindred, you find that you actually know some of the stuff and are really excited about learning more. You gain a bonus to scholarship and learning experience, but others find you disdainful, so your charisma can't be raised above three. Aww. You know, I kind of want that, though. Subtly insane. Nah, I need dodge. Ninja? You think you're a ninja. Kai! Of course, no silent ninja would ever have a duck. That's just stupid. <laughs> Nutty weatherman. Deaf. You can have death vampires? You think that would just like auto fix itself after vampirism took hold. But I'm being boring, so let's just go ahead and hit none. Basic Malkavian go. Huh? Auto spend. Now go. <laughs> Half past midnight, party animal. Not a big fan of that hairstyle, bro. Good shot. Good evening. My fellow kindred. You think she would have saw that My coming. apologies for disrupting any business or interfering with prior engagements you may have had this evening. It's unfortunate that the affair that gathers us together tonight is a troubling one. 
We are here because the laws that bind our society, the laws that are the fabric of our existence, have been broken. No, As prince, I am within my rights to grant or deny the kindred of this city the privilege of siring. Many of you have come to me seeking permission, and I have endorsed some of these requests. However, the accused that sits before you tonight was not refused permission. Indeed, my permission was never sought at all. They were caught shortly after the embrace of this child. It pains me to announce the sentence, as up to tonight I considered the accused a loyal and upstanding member of our organization. But as some of you may know, the penalty for this transgression is death. Know that I am no more adjudicator than I am a servant to the law that governs us all. Let tonight's proceedings serve as a reminder to our community that we must adhere to the code that binds our society, lest we endanger hey, all of the blue our blood. Forgive me. Let the penalty commence. Where'd the head go? Which leads to the fate of the ill-begotten progeny. Without a sire, most child are doomed to walk the earth never knowing their place, their responsibility, and most importantly, the laws they must obey. Therefore, I have decided that this is bullshit! All I'm saying is that he better not do it. If Mr. Rodriguez would let me finish, I have decided to let this kindred live. They shall be instructed in the ways of our kind and be granted the same rights. Let no one say I am unsympathetic to the plights and causes of this community. I thank you all for attending these proceedings, and I hope their significance is not lost. Good evening. Your son, tragic. My apologies. But you see, there is a strict code of conduct that all of us must, must adhere to if we wish to survive. When someone, anyone, breaks these laws, they undermine the well-worn fabric of our centuries-old society. Understand my predicament. Allowing you to live makes me directly responsible for your subsequent behavior. So. What I'm offering is not generosity, but the opportunity to transcend the fate woven by your side. This is your trial. You will be brought to Santa Monica. There, you will meet an agent by the name of Mercury. He will provide the details of your labor. I've shown you great clemency. Prove it was more than a wasted gesture, Fledgling. Don't come back. Yeah, sure, back at you. Not the... He just makes me think of my boss, to be quite honest with you. Smile through the teeth, say whatever. I don't know. Come on, man, you didn't know her that well. You were with her for like two hours or something. Anyways, I'm gonna cut here. But we will continue this raving madman and his journey later. Yorick. We hardly knew he, but we will know him much better later.